This video is sponsored by EcoFlow Delta Max. Is this the toughest trail in America? I have no idea, but it's certainly in the middle of nowhere. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, about to get into a little adventure. It is June, I'm in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, about to hop out of the Jeep. I got three days off, we're gonna do two nights, three days. I uh, got a hammock, got a tarp, we'll see where things take us. So, I got my pack there, I'm gonna grab that in a second. I'm here at the Pinkham Notch Visitor Center, little threat of rain. We'll see how that plays out, but it's morning right now. Sun doesn't set till 8.30, and it's nine something right now. Gonna grab my stuff and see what happens. Get this pack out of here. I'm back to my ultralight setup because the elevation gains and the terrain around here is a little rough. So I've paired my pack back down to about eight and a half pounds base weight, and uh, that should feel a bit nicer than the ridiculous pack that I've been doing on some uh, group trips with my wife and friends on my previous few trips. This feels much nicer. All right. I'm gonna head over here. This visitor center is a pretty popular spot. It's right at the base of Mount Washington. It's got Tuckerman Ravine Trail, which is, which is very popular, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do something a little less traveled than that, called the Old Jackson Road Trail. Should be around here somewhere. We're here, there's Old Jackson Road. Oh, Tuckerman Ravine Trail. It's actually closed. It's a good thing I wasn't planning on doing that. Avalanche danger. Falling ice danger in June. There you go. All right. Just felt a couple raindrops just now. Uh, old Jackson Road, which is also the Appalachian Trail. So, <laughs> in that case, uh, this would be the opposite of a lesser traveled path. I guess I uh, didn't take that into consideration, but this time of year, uh, I don't think the AT, Appalachian Trail uh, herd, if you will, is probably up here quite yet. Eh, they could be, but we'll see if we'll run into any of the, those guys and gals. Speaking of routes, we should probably talk about what we're going to do here for the next three days i'm going to do some sort of loop i have a general idea i have main, uh, one main trail that i want to try which is called hold on first let's make sure which way we're going here uh oh well this is easy enough just keep following white blazes because that's the sign of the appalachian trail so i'm going to take this about six miles in, five and a half, six miles in, two and a half thousand feet of elevation gain. Shouldn't be too crazy of a day. And then I'm gonna set up camp at the base of a trail called the Six Husbands Trail. And that is apparently a very aggressive trail, or so I've heard. I've got a bit of a pen pal. So this one is for Minton. He uh, sent a letter, typed up a letter and sent it to my P.O. box where I give away um, free stickers to people. And he is, geez, I want to say he's probably in his 80s. He started hiking back or up here back in the late to mid 60s. It was kind of his heyday. And uh, he went all over in this area. So we started corresponding a bit back and forth. And he had mentioned that the Six Husbands Trail was pretty intense. And I looked it up and it does look like 
it's listed as possibly the toughest trail in the whites and i'm a believer that uh the white mountains are the toughest hiking on the east coast some of the toughest in the country so we're gonna find out if the sixth husband trail lives up to its reputation i'm gonna save that for tomorrow as the road noise slowly fades away and the birds keep on chirping so tomorrow i'll have a fresh set of legs and i'll get right into trying that aggressive trail and then probably do eight miles tomorrow up to uh, the summit of jefferson which is where that trail heads and then if all goes well i'm going to hit mount washington as well drop down depending on how things are going and go into the dry river wilderness set up camp for a second night and then decide how we want to come back here um, to the visitor center we can go above tree line or below which brings up a good point have a threat of thunderstorms originally it was going to be on the last day today's tuesday so it was originally going to be on thursday but looks like everything kind of slid forward a little bit so potential rain today potential thunderstorms tomorrow which i do not want to be above tree line for that so we're going to play it by ear which is why i said the loop i've planned is not set in stone for safety and fun reasons too we'll see how it goes not too crazy yet it's june so right now it's about 82 degrees probably not going to go up too much higher than that and it'll probably swing into the 50s tonight depending on the elevation that we're at and whatnot sweating a lot of uphill in the beginning there we have entered great gulf wilderness and the uphill has returned now up here should be something called lowe's bald spot before we get too deep into things though I do want to take an opportunity to thank our sponsor for this video the ecoflow delta max You've seen me use a lot of smaller battery options for backpacking as well as at our off-the-grid cabin in the woods. But what if you want to take it to the next level, like something that can power the whole cabin at once, along with large appliances? Enter the EcoFlow Delta Max. With an output of 2400 watts, it can run the AC, lights, entertainment system, and charge our multiple devices all at once. And by enabling X-Boost mode, we can up the output even further to 3,400 watts. To put that in perspective, a standard wall outlet is like 2,000 watts or less. So basically, if you can plug it in at home, we can run it on the Delta Max. Afternoon cup of coffee from the Keurig while watching an old school movie on the DVD player? No problem. Our cabin was already wired for a generator, so I just plugged it into our single main line. But you can see here that it's got six built-in wall outlets for more impromptu use. Six USB ports, two DC 5521 ports, and a 12 volt DC outlet. There's an AC output for wall charging, as well as an input for either 12 volt DC or solar panels, which is what we're eventually going to install on the roof of the cabin for permanent use. Till we get that project done though, no worries. EcoFlow has the world's fastest charging system. I mean, seriously, the charging speed is insane. I just plug in the Xtreme charging port into a wall outlet at home or on the generator, and it goes from zero to 100% in under two hours. After that, we're back in business with over 2000 watt hours of runtime. There's even a phone app that makes it super easy to wirelessly monitor usage data, check charge levels, and change settings via the built-in Wi-Fi. And yes, I could still connect to it without the internet up at the cabin. I was able to start testing this unit before it actually came out, but if you use the special link in my video description, you can get access to their launch on Kickstarter right now. So thank you EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. 
Now, let's get back into the woods. Lowe's bald spot. Maybe a good spot for a snack break. Well, getting up there. We're getting up there. This is it shoulder of Mount Washington behind us there the trail continues this is a little spur trail I'm doing just a little tenth of a mile spur to the bald spot which I believe we are on now I'll tell you what I went from hot and sweaty to uh, <laughs> cold and sweaty real quick up here with the wind I think this is it I'll probably try to Okay, there's Wildcat ski uh, slopes there, if you can see that. And that would be the Wildcat Range, which I've done in my Prestacat loop before. And this is actually a good view of just how grueling those up and downs. You got Wildcat, uh, was it A through E? I think it might, they might have changed it. I don't know if they're all designated the same now, but it's Wildcat A, B, C, D, E. And then it eventually drops down to um, the shelter in the pond over there. But we're not going that way. Our loop is going to take us around up here to Jefferson and eventually to Washington. And then we'll drop down on the other side of that for um, Dry River Wilderness on day two. <sighs> Oh man, that cloud cover too. Just in the amount of time that I was talking, uh, look how much that changed. It is just pouring down off of the mountain. This is home to some of the worst weather in the world. Highest recorded wind speed ever, 231 miles. That stood for a long time until I wanna say maybe in Australia, I believe it was. But it is consistently really volatile weather on Mount Washington. And seeing that come down right now, I don't, I don't know what that's gonna do. Hopefully I don't get a bunch of driving rain. We'll see. Well. The moose activity around here all over this trail We've dropped down considerably in elevation since leaving uh, the bald spot up there and this is Madison Gulf Trail then we're going to link up with Great Gulf Trail and that's going to lead us towards Six Husbands the intersection should be relatively soon a little bit more Elevation loss here as the wind picks up and we get on the other side of this ridge here. Um, but once we link up with Great Gulf Trail, we're kind of going to be hugging the contours of the shoulder of Mount Washington. And there shouldn't be a whole lot of substantial or painful, I should say, elevation gain changes. You know, a couple hundred feet here, 100 up, 100 down, 200 up back and forth a little bit of that but sh shouldn't be too crazy from looking at the map and then at that point we'll uh, look for camp in the same area that Minton said he used to camp 
uh, back in his day. Uh, he said, at the foot of Six Husbands and Wamsuda Trail, which is an intersection with the three of those um, trails. Uh, and at that point, we'll be five, five miles into the wilderness, pretty back there. Um, decent water around there, which is nice. Um, so I am not carrying a ton of water on this trip for once. It's been a long time since I've had, a, I think the last three or four trips have been dry sites, but I did not have to carry all my water on this trip, which is nice. I just have some treatment tablets, keeping it light. But that'll be pretty awesome to just have water at camp. And there's multiple opportunities in that area, it looks like. We'll kind of play it by ear when we get there. No rain either. Really thought it was going to open up on me earlier, but it's ending up being a beautiful day. And uh, look at that flowing water. Here we are. Six Husband Trail starts right here. Goes downhill a little bit actually. And it meets up with the water. Over here is Great Gulf Trail. As you can see from the sign there. We are in pretty deep right now. And Mount Washington is that direction. So Jefferson's that way. Mount Clay, Mount Washington. If I continued down here, I've never been on this stretch of trail, but eventually it gets to the Sphinx Trail, which if you followed this channel over the years, I have been up and down that trail many times because I use it as a um, kind of like an escape route. I come down and there's a trail junction up there and um, some legal but unofficial camping. Around here in the White Mountains in general, um, unless it's a forest protection zone, you can camp anywhere for the most part, except for a few specific places. Um, you can camp wherever you want as long as you're 150 feet from the trail or a water source. The, that sounds great, but often that's very hard because it is very dense, rocky, and steep. So, occasionally they will have camp here little signs that the Forest Service puts up. Um, and that tells you that basically those rules don't apply. So it might be a uh, campsite that is right on the trail, but they're like, hey, we, we just want to keep the impact here. Um, so those options are out here. If I headed up here within maybe a half to a third mile, there's supposedly two uh, legally designated campsites that are close to the trail and accessible. And up here on the Wamsuta Trail, or maybe it's Wamsutta, um, this right here looks like a very rugged and um, less kept trail, which is awesome. It looks really cool. That starts to go uphill, but apparently there is a either designated camping or uh, a legally acceptable camping up there. And then down here, if I go towards Six Husbands and um, the water, there is on the other side of the water, apparently a designated um, uh, legal campsite even though it's close to the water at this point I am away from the Appalachian Trail that is long gone behind me back down that way um, we've left the Appalachian Trail it is midweek I'm not really too worried about anybody else being out here so I think I'm gonna have the place to myself I think I'm pretty much all alone right now the skies haven't opened up yet but that is a possibility so I'd like to get to camp it is 2.23 in the afternoon. I'm making great time. I've got six hours before sunset, but all I know for sure is this is the trail I want to do, Six Husbands. So 
I'm going to go ahead and take my chances with finding camp on the same trail that I'm here to do. And as far as my friend Minton goes, um, I don't know. He said he would camp at the base of Wamsuda and Six Husband. I have a feeling that means perhaps he camped up on Wamsuda that way. But I'm, I'm not sure and I didn't have a chance to ask him before I came and there's certainly no <laughs> cell service to shoot an email right now. So I'm just going to take this as close enough to where Minton used to camp in this general area. I'm going to call that a win and start heading towards this um, camping that I read about. From reading online, I think it still is a decent and legal one. And here we are. This is the water that I've been following for eh, the second half of my day. And we're going to cross it. I don't see where the trail is on the other side. I think it might be over there. So I'll carefully cross this and then keep my eyes peeled for camping. Just a moment ago, I could see the top of a little sub peak there, but it's getting eaten by these gray clouds. So I'm going to get a move on and try to beat the rain and uh, try to cross this safely somehow. I've got pretty fast drying shoes on these wildcats. Uh, they're very meshy. They dry quick, but honestly, it's going down into the 50s tonight and I'm pretty close to stopping my movement for the day. So I would like to avoid getting my feet wet at the end of the day. They may end up being wet and cold for the remainder of today. So I'm just going to try to carefully navigate and I, well, as long as I can get over there, we'll figure out where the trail is. Uh, let's go for it. Not bad. It feels like this might be a little precarious during heavier flows. But we made it. And then I think maybe through here. I can kind of get back. I don't see a cairn or a pile of rocks showing where the actual trail is, but... No, I guess this isn't it. There is the trail. This would be ironic if I have to cross again, so hopefully that's not the case. We'll just skirt the side here. Try to make my way to where the trail continues. I think it's over there. It might be bushwhacking. Because that looks really deep. Well, let's try to get through the woods here and we'll just crash through it and see what happens. Whoa! It's really dense now. The character of my surrounding is really, surroundings has really changed now. But I feel like I feel like this is the trail from the other side. Ah, here we go. Just gotta be real careful. These rocks are a bit slippery. Woo! There we go. This is it. I guess that's officially where I would have crossed, but that didn't look too good all right now as is classic for the white mountains looks like the trail right now is basically a drainage which on these more rugged wilderness trails where there's less maintenance and legally they can't use like you know anything non hand tool to do maintenance around here and they can't do blazes either um, it's a lot easier to just make the trail be a runoff because nothing's going to grow here that's kind of how sphinx trail was which runs parallel to this 
And now we are on six husbands. We made it. Leaving the water behind. It's getting quieter. I can hear my bird friends again. Just keep my eyes peeled. Would you look at that? Right on the other side of the creek, on a little something called the Buttress Trail, which, uh, well, butts up against six husbands. Ooh, almost knocked that over. I got a sign. Camping allowed here, even though it's right next to the water. Great. No fires. But that's, um, that's completely expected. Uh, Great Gulf Wilderness is a no fire area. Now I don't know where this sign's saying, well, to camp, but let's see. I imagine if I just keep on walking, something will happen because it doesn't look too obvious. This is definitely a clearing here. Although there was a couple people over there, so I was completely wrong. About having this place to myself. Looks like I could camp here. But I don't know. I'll take a look at my map. I don't really want to camp right next to somebody in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure they would feel that way too. About a half mile that I went, but it was relatively flat. Perhaps this is fate intervening. There's the Wimsuda Junction. And perhaps the spirits of the late 1960s are telling me I'm supposed to be camping up there, Syntax. So... Although I'm a little uncomfortable that I just spoke in a third person, I think I'm gonna head back. Back to the intersection once again. Great Gulf Trail, that way. Third time's the charm, right? We tried down there, tried up there, ripped my shirt wide open on that trail. And now, let's see, can't find a home. Another sign. This one looks a little bigger. Same thing though, a lot of thin trees. I like that one, but I don't see a pair for it. Well, he's thin but healthy. Now, if we do get a storm and it's windy tonight, it's not gonna be a safety issue, but this birch is gonna move for sure. And, uh, Sometimes that rocks you to sleep and sometimes it wakes you up. Once again, the water's right down here, it sounds like, which is cool. Uh, oh, look at that. That looks like another area to potentially camp down here, closer to the water. Now, close to water sounds better, but in my experience, it's colder at night. And also, it's a little noisy. It can put you to sleep, but uh, if you're like me and you want to hang out in the hammock and listen to an audiobook, it can be a little loud, but let's go take a look. Now, this may be a gray area. I mean, does that sign apply to this spot too? Is this all one spot? You tell me. It's certainly well used. Now this definitely can get a hammock strapped there to there. 
This tree's a little in the way for the tarp, but we could just pitch it tight in the back, open in the front. Can't have any fires here anyway, so I'm not worried about where I will put a fire pit. Although it looks like somebody burnt something there, but I'll just try to pretend I didn't see that. I won't be doing the same. Oh, and look at that. The view of the mountain. I can put the hammock up, have the tarp back initially, and stare at the shoulder of Washington. Yeah. This is it. I'm dropping. Dropping the pack. Oh, take it off. Woo! Not quite the same relief as my last couple trips. Bring an old Big Blue, the 30, 40 pounder. This is more like probably mm, a total of 15, 17 pounds at the most. But the nice thing about doing those other trips where I'm bringing a bunch of stuff for my wife and my dog and everything, it's kind of like training. Then when you come here on tougher terrain, you switch to the lighter pack and you feel like uh, you feel like you're on, you got the afterburners on and it kind of balances out the tougher terrain because you're used to hiking with a bigger pack. So me personally, I don't like to always hike ultra light. I feel physically, uh, I, it helps me to overdo it sometimes and bring a bunch of crap. And then when you really gotta perform, you bring the little pack. No rain yet. A little breezy though. Should probably get set up. My tarp, Dyneema tarp as it's called nowadays. Five ounces for the whole thing. And that's a 12 foot tarp. Let's get that up. All right. These clouds are certainly encroaching. Can't see the top of that shoulder anymore. Ooh, I'll tell you what, 411, but uh, I'm getting pretty hungry. The skies are getting dark, so went ahead and got the tarp up right away. Probably was the right decision. And uh, now I'm gonna make some food. So I got my Big Easy, Big Easy pardon me, Cajun gumbo from Packet Gourmet. Got my spoon there, long handled, so I can get in there and uh, alcohol stove. Super light, little cat cam with some holes punched in it. Weighs a quarter of an ounce. We're just gonna fill this guy with some alcohol fuel. Spark this guy through one of the side holes. It should light up. There we go, it's lit. Burns very hot, so you can barely see the flame at first. Sit this guy on there without burning my hands off. And the yellow flames are because there's some duff on the bo uh, bottom of the pot. That'll burn off. Put my windscreen on there to block the wind, which is coming right from off of the uh, creek here. And that should come to a boil probably in three-ish minutes. I'll pour that hot water in here, let it sit 15 minutes, I'll be good to go. Um, it did come with a little thing of Tabasco, so I'll definitely be dumping that in there. Turkey broth concentrate. Let's add a little flavor. Squeeze that baby in there. So that's cranking. Pretty soon that'll be in a boil. We'll put it in there, let it rehydrate. I'll have some gumbo. Enjoy the sights. See if the rain opens up or not. probably go to sleep early don't have much else to do and I know when that Sun comes up in the morning it's gonna wake me up all in all a good day haven't got rained on yet we'll see what happens tomorrow
Uh, good morning, everyone. It is 6.08 a.m. It started getting light before 5 a.m. I forced myself to go back to sleep. That was just too early, a little too much. Uh, then I finally decided to get up at six and it suddenly got much darker. And uh, now it finally started raining. I made it through the whole night without rain and it just started now. And you can hear that hitting on the tarp. I, um, I don't know how much heavier it's going to get, if it's going to be just a passing cloud or what's going on. But uh, speaking of clouds, that's a lot of cloud cover right there. Can't see my mountain friend over there too much or at all, which I did have a nice view of until the last 10 minutes or so. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll get up. Oh boy. And um, probably take my hammock down just so the straps don't get wet and to give myself some space under here. I can start slowly packing things up. We can just pull that tarp at the last minute. But, yeah. It's dawning on me now. This trail, uh, probably not gonna be the best in the rain. It's got some ladders on it and some steep rock, large slabs of rock. So that'll be fun. Minton did tell me definitely do not. This is a trail that you only go up. You do not descend it. Um, just would not be good for that, especially with the kind of down climbing the rocks and the, the ladder sections. Because there's a couple spots where um, it would be completely impossible to go up um, or down or traverse at all um, without these sections where they put ladders. So I'm hoping the sun comes back out and it dries out, but we'll see. If it really opens up, I'll be honest, I'm gonna wait it out. All right. I think this is my opportunity to get going. As usual, I got a late start. I never seem to be able to avoid that, but that's okay. I uh, sat the rain out and now the bugs are back and it's much warmer. I'm ready to get away from them and into some sunshine. And I do believe that that little vector right there, that ridge, is most likely the Six Husbands Trail. Because looking at my topo map, that looks like basically we came from up on this little mini ridge here yesterday. So we'll get back up on it, travel down to the intersection, cross this water again, and then that should be our trail, which looks pretty aggressive and still under some clouds, unfortunately. But it's a heck of a lot better than it was. We'll just backtrack out. Get on to this Six Husbands Trail. Yep, things are getting a little more interesting. Going under some rock overhangs here as we really get into the Six Husbands Trail. Ah, I'll tell you what, the shade under here actually feels really good. The, the day, I'm happy for the sun, but it is progressively getting warmer and probably more humid because of that rain as I try to safely get myself up here on these loose rocks. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. But yeah, this is it. We're into it. 
And it's funny, speaking of loose rocks, sounds weird to say, but when Minton was here 50 plus years ago, same trail. A lot of freezing and thawing periods. A lot of new rocks were created and rolled away, but for all I know, that was the same rock that he grabbed and moved out of his way so he wouldn't fall. But in general, this is the same trail. Different trees have fallen. Different trees have grown. But same mountain. And it's getting steep. Oh, we're getting up there. There's the ridge above us. Where we came from. And where we're going. Up these rocks and through these woods. This is definitely challenging um, and a little confusing. And I am really glad that it's not wet right now because that would be way less than ideal. I guess I could go around there or I can crawl through here. I still, I'm not convinced this is the trail though. Yeah, that can't be it. Hi, log. All right. Um, well, that was a waste of a scramble. <sighs> like, <laughs> what would you do in the rain here? Slip and slide, I guess, right? Well, <laughs> just spent about five minutes hobbling around, going under different uh, underpasses, under, whatever you want to call them. And that finally stood out to me. It's a pile of rocks. Not natural. Not over there, but over here. So I was wrong. I think the only way to get through here take off my pack put it through and thank goodness I have a lighter load on this trip because I guess it would be possible with big blue but I would not want to do this with a winter load out good lord all right Spinks trails beat 
in terms of difficulty. Just got put in the second place. I hope I didn't just bust my phone. Oh yeah, okay. Feels like trail again, <laughs> at least relative to what we've been doing. Feels like we're getting up there, so let's see what's ahead. Bananas. Oh, there's another one. I should, suppose I should be thankful because without that ladder, <laughs> we're not doing anything. But good Lord. Insane. Ah, whoops. Hitting the pack there. No ladder to help us on this last section. And it's wet. Thank you, tree, for being there when I need you. Look at that scree field. You can tell by that cloud cover, we may or may not have a view when we get above tree line, which is close. I can tell by these trees, we're getting there. Be almost there to the ridge that is clouds are moving fast that's for sure welcome to above tree line or real close to it at least this is the chromalts these would normally be uh, trees and whatnot they're battered down by the conditions, the wind. And it really depends on the terrain and the orientation of the sun. You can see we're going into another pocket right here, which is giving me a little break from that wind. Nice little respite. But we're pretty much up here now, or at least close to it. That was intense. But up here, probably getting to the rocky boulder field and we'll decide what route to do from here snow field over there not quite gone yet but we're up here now Ugh. There's Mount Washington. <sighs> Mount Clay right there. We don't have to go over top of that. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, probably, probably not going to. Done before, probably not gonna do it again. We got Jefferson straight ahead by the uh, snowfield direction, but I don't know. I don't know, we'll see what we wanna do. Woo, if you can even hear me.
there's what we came up. See a little hump there? That's where our six husbands come up. Comes up. Um, that was just a that was a tough trail. I got to give it to it. And maybe I stopped and smelled the roses a bit too much. But on top of that, and the sheer uh, just kind of toughness of the trail. Now I'm into the classic above tree line White Mountains. These knife edge loose scree fields of rocks combined with a, just enough wind to throw your balance off when you're wearing a pack. At least that's my list of excuses. <laughs> um, yeah, every time I do this, I'm like, it's not a big deal. Just a rock field. And then you get here and every step is a decision of which rock to put your foot on and uh, will it move or not? There's Mount Washington. We're gonna split over here, try to tag Washington. summit behind and we'll find some camp. this right here as we finally get a little break from the wind is lake of the clouds really cool up there's mount washington where we came from i have uh, never actually walked down to lake of the clouds pretty cool that wind just continues to whip. <laughs> Look at this though. Wow, that's really cool with that rock in there. This is beautiful. Wow. Now where does the trail go? Dry River. Shelter number three. I don't know, what do you think? We're gonna have better luck than yesterday? As far as somebody already at camp? I mean, at this point, it is Wednesday. I don't know. We'll see if anybody's there. It's starting to lose that daylight. It's going over the ridge there, which means probably gonna get dark for me little quicker especially as I drop down into the woods here a couple thousand feet and it's very rocky loose kind of scree situation and occasionally wet as the water seems to be running down here on and off this will be like this for a little bit it's gonna be intense but after a big old drop off eventually it's going to mellow out as we get into the actual valley floor and um, then I should really kind of pick up I don't know whatever's left of that three miles of mileage combination of very peaceful and kind of stressful just I mean just because I don't want to mess up my footing this late in the day I'm getting tired and that's when I make my mistakes, is trying to speed up at the end of the day and make up time. So I'm not going to, well, I'm going to try not to make that mistake. Dry River Trail is it's just really beat up in here. 
and that is from 2011 once again hurricane irene completely reshaped this trail or destroyed it causing some sections like this and some other parts that are completely rerouted there's been a few times that i've lost the trail uh, completely which has slowed me down and other times like this it's just uh, dealing with navigation so we'll see but hopefully pretty soon woo, um, we'll find the shelter area getting dark getting dark Well, sometimes that's just how it goes. shelter last night finally as you can tell I uh, out of pure laziness just put my hammock right up in the uh, shelter just put the straps up on some of these beams here uh, that are nicely located in the shelter and uh, I got here well after dark and there's still plenty of room down there if somebody else had shown up and needed some shelter as well. <sighs> that was a long day. And I feel like some bug may have bitten me <laughs> right in the eyelid. My eye eyelid feels a little swollen. Does it look swollen? I haven't looked yet, but that feels a little weird. Other than that... Uh, I don't feel sore or anything like that. No injuries. I do feel just beat. Pretty tired. Yesterday was just a very taxing day mentally and physically. Just a long day. I expected um, the Six Husbands Trail to be tough, and it was. Um, what I didn't, I guess, give enough credit to was how demanding going down the dry river trail is going to be um that was really slow going those last few miles to get here in the dark wet trail just really steep um but anyway i made it here at dark the nice thing about dry river trail or shelter rather number three is that um you are allowed to have fires here so i made a little fire when i got here last night put myself to bed although it, I was excited to get here and not be getting beat up hiking so I ended up staying up for a couple hours and uh, went to bed pretty late and then the sun came up or I should say it got bright right at 4 a.m. so not quite as much sleep as I wanted but uh, good enough the nice thing is it'll be real quick to pack up um, because I don't have my tarp out or anything like that. So, I'll probably enjoy the view here a little bit, but I will probably convince myself to get going because yesterday was probably nine miles and we got another eh, similar amount of mileage today. But first things first, get these wet shoes back on. Take it from there. Whew. Here's the shelter though. And you can see my hammock set up with my three quarter length hammock gear, under quilt and top quilt. Got 30 degrees on the bottom, 40 up top. It's plenty for this weather. And uh, I'm a little crooked because of the way the beams were 
but it got the job done. Water's right over there. I basically followed that down last night. There's two little veins. There's a thinner one. I walked all the way down. I got lost a little bit. A little doubtful of whether or not I was on the trail. Wasted a lot of time on that. But then crossed over after refilling my water there. And on over to the shelter and the fire pit. Nice little area. Whew. Man, I got bug bites all over. Guess my bug juice wore off at some point yesterday and they started eating me up and I wasn't paying attention. Whew. Blue skies though. That's nice. I will pack up and we'll get back at it. I don't even think I'm gonna eat yet. I'm just gonna get back on the trail. Like I said, quick and easy to pack up. Shoved it all in the bag, no tarp to mess with. It's 8.30 in the morning. I could have gone faster as usual. I didn't. Um, but I got, <coughs> pardon me, some, uh, I didn't bring coffee on this trip, so I just did some water with some Mio Energy. And I have an electrolyte one too, but that'll give me a little caffeine hit. Well, water treatment tablets right there and PA plus which turns the water um, back to a clear uh, color and removes the iodine taste from the first phase ones there so that was good and this right here Linda I didn't forget you on my last trip up here in December uh, I tried to do Mount Washington and you were nice enough you sent this I mentioned it on that video. Um, you sent an alpaca scarf to my wife and this here, Appalachian Mountain Club topographical uh, handkerchief that you picked up on the summit of Mount Washington. Oh, back in the 90s. This says 92 right there. I said I would bring it back to Washington. I failed in December. I finally did it this time, yesterday. I didn't get a chili dog, but I did get your handkerchief back up there. Speaking of maps, I'll show you a little bit of what we're uh, what we're doing and how we're going to wrap it up. That's where we parked the first day, and uh, the visitor center. And then we came up here. There's Lowe's bold sp bold spot. Our first views came all the way around. This is where we trudged around and looked for camp and finally settled on that spot on night one. Then here's Six Husbands Trail and all its brutality. We came all the way up, went, uh, skip Jefferson, uh, sorry, maybe next time. Went around Mount Clay, didn't do that this time either. Went up here to Washington for No Chili Dog, then came down, and this was the crazy down climbing trail that was Dry River Trail. And right now, I'm right here at the uh, Dry River Shelter number three, which, by the way, it's called shelter number three, um, but shelters number one and two don't exist anymore. Perhaps back in Minton's days, they did, but they are no longer standing. So number three, although it's called that, is the only one uh, along Dry River. Today, from this little campsite uh, marker there, I'm actually going to head the opposite direction of where I ultimately need to go but i'm definitely not going back up that trail from yesterday and then i'm going to hook a uh, sharp turn here on isolation trail over to north isolation down here and then this is where we can make a decision but we'll see i'm gonna put the maps away get this pack back on my back and uh head down here and get back on the trail I'm at about 2,500 feet elevation, uh, Mark. And now comes the work. 
the push. We're gonna get up to about 5,000 feet. At that point, we can split off either to Boot Spur or Glen Boulder Trail. And so the elevation gain begins. And I should point out too, I'm doing this trip in honor of uh, Minton, but where I slept last night is not really on the route that he would typically take. He said his go-to was he would hit Mount Washington and then branch off towards Hermit Lake Shelter. Maybe I should have done that. That probably would have cut off that brutality of an extra mileage of going down Dry River yesterday. Give myself some extra mileage, but the sun is out and I'm feeling good. I got one hot meal left. That's uh, some ramen noodles and some hot sauce. And I'm really craving salt. I must be uh, a little depleted in that regard. Get my last hot meal for the trip, basically. After that, I'll just be craving that post hike cheeseburger. That's what's gonna push me on. We're getting up there just mile after mile of relentless uphill now I know it's gonna go up again but if you can see through there I don't know if you can but there's a little blue sky it looks like it's gonna level out as we head through this kind of beat up area here and I probably tore another hole in my shirt but yeah, it's been pretty intense. I uh, took eh, the liberty of about an hour <laughs> break sitting by the water and eating noodles. And um, was that the smartest thing to do timing wise? I don't know. Is there any right way to do this? Probably not. It's 136. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to kill myself, but at the same time, I am kind of aware that I do not want a night hike again. And um, <laughs> I think I'm averaging a mile per hour just because I keep stopping to relax, have a snack, drink water, enjoy the views and whatnot. But I'm just going to take advantage of this little flat plateau section here. And, uh, actually make maybe you know closer to three miles per hour instead of one just to balance things out here trees are getting a little smaller again and look who it is right there mount washington once again looming over us eh. Don't really feel like going back up there again. There's the uh, snow fields from um, yesterday evening. Not the first ones we encountered. That was over there towards Jefferson. But that, based on the snow fields, so that's where we dipped down right in between my, where my finger is here. We came in along there and then, there we go, straight drop down on dry river trail and then <laughs> straight back up to here the moment of decision <sighs> boot spur trail half mile up and over that then it drops down and around no mention of pinkham notch on there this sign glen boulder trail and it has pinkham notch listed Route 16, that is us, us. 3.2 miles. So I'm already above tree line, getting great views. I love it up here. Just, I love New Hampshire and I love the fact that it's not windy today, but it's kind of cool. Temp wise, feels really good. But I told myself 
I could look at my map and add things up or whichever trail says Pinkham Notch on it. I'm just going to take that one because I'm assuming that means it's the least amount of mileage and 3.2 doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> I say that now, but it should be mostly downhill. I'll get some views on the way and that's what we're going to do. There's Wildcat in the distance once again to give you a little perspective and where we camped somewhere down way down in there start heading down soak up the sun that's another thing too i've wiped out my water i've really been pounding it hiking out here in the sun and i know from doing glen boulder before i'm looking forward to uh getting down there eventually below tree line a little rehydration some flowing water well this is a bit of a puzzle making my way down through a jumble of rocks looking forward to a Dirt trail, that's for sure. The views are nice, but the knees are getting tired. And there's the visitor center down there, taunting us. Flame broiled patties. Well, at least the sun's still out. Well, what do you know? Made it back to the visitor center and I can see my Jeep over there through the trees. So I think we're gonna call this one Mission complete. Hope I did you proud, Minton and Linda. And want to give a big thank you to all of my viewers out there that give me the ideas and inspirations to do these trips. Really had a good time on this one. It's a beautiful area. I love New Hampshire. But right now, I am very hungry. So, till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>